what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today guys, we're back again with a new video. But today is very special guys. I'm here with my pastor. He's extraordinary, he's incredible. And let me introduce him, Pastor Silas. Okay. Introduce yourself a bit. My name is Pastor Silas. Pastor Silas. That's just... Yep. Guys, I've been watching a lot of Muslim videos and learning a lot from you guys. and. I just brought my pastor over to share his feedback and we'll watch it together and he so he'll be able to tell me what to think about the video so this is going to be an incredible reaction uh we ask for the grace of god to direct us mm -hmm. so let's get right into the video guys I have read the Bible through many, many, many times. And others such as I have read it many more times, much more educated than I could ever be, understanding both Hebrew and Greek. Uh, Mohammed is not mentioned in the Old Testament. With this countless number of reading, the man doesn't see it. How can that be? I said, you see, what has happened is this. First, that Muhammad is mentioned by name in the original scriptures. The Old Testament, according to Christian authorities, was preserved in the Hebrew language. And the New Testament in Greek scriptures, Greek language. In the Old Testament, in the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16, in the Hebrew language, it reads, Hikko mamittakim vi kullo muhammadim zehdudi vi zehrei bainat Jerusalem. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. The word muhammadim is muhammad im, im, I am im. Im is a plural of respect in Hebrew. You see the first verse of the Bible, book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The word God in Hebrew there is Elohim. In Hebrew, Ella stands for God. Elohim is a plural form to say with all respect and reverence. Plural of respect. In all Eastern languages, including Arabic and Hebrew, there are two types of plurals, plural of respect as well as numbers. In the Quran also we find the very same thing. Like the verse Allah says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. That it is for us to send down the revelation and it is for us to protect it. Who is this us? Ask any Muslim. Who is this us? Is Allah Jibreel and Muhammad, like Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? No. But is as, who is as? When we are told in the Holy Quran, Qul Allahu Ahad, say, He is Allah, the one and only. Here he's talking about as. No Arab Christian has ever asked the Muslim, I said the Arab Christian, has ever asked the Muslim, who is this as? Because he knows in his language, there are two types of plurals. Plural of numbers and plural of respect. This as is like in royal proclamations, you have plural of respect. We have decreed, says the queen. We. Who is this we? Not she and her husband and her, her son. No, no, no. It's standing for herself. Out of respect. Plural. So Elohim 
is the plural of respect. Im. El is God. Ella is God. Elohim is more than one of respect. Ask any Jew. This is his book. Ask him what is this Im. He said, look, in my language, this is the plural of respect. God is one, but out of respect we speak like that. Im. He says, Muhammad Im. Muhammad Im. Plural of respect. What okay. do you think about us so far? Let's just look at the Songs of Solomon chapter yeah, 5. Yeah, 5 verse, verse 16. Verse 16, right? Yeah. Okay, so, so we just look at it quick. 5 verse 16. 5 verse 16. Okay, yeah. So it says, His mouth is most sweet. Yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Hmm? So basically, um, I'd like us to go to First Peter first, first uh, Second Peter, sorry, verse 1. Okay, he said, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Hmm. What is he saying here? He's saying that you can't just pick a word out of the scripture, out of the Bible, and then begin to read meanings to it. There is a, there is a corresponding verse or scripture or letter that points to that particular word that you are picking from the scripture. Now, before you establish doctrine, before you establish a doctrine of either the doctrine of um, Muhammad, doctrine of Islam, whatever, according to scripture, for you to establish doctrine, there are things, there are certain basic factors you must put into consideration. One is that it must be in the Old Testament. Okay. It must be in the Old Testament. Number two, it must be in the New Testament. Okay. That is, the New Testament I'm talking about, it must be Jesus, Jesus probably when he was on earth should have addressed it. Okay. This is how to establish doctrine. To establish doctrine, first, it must be in the Old Testament. Right. It must be in the Old Covenant. Number two, Jesus has to make a statement reference when he came in the go reference to that thing. Yeah. Number three, it would be in the letters, the epistles, the letters of Paul, letters of um, Peter, letters of John. It will be written there. Okay. That's how to establish doctrine, biblical doctrine. So any scripture that stands on its own is not enough to establish a truth out of. Because truth is not just a trans, truth is a person. Hmm. So if you are, um, and basically even this um, Songs of Solomon here, yeah. Songs of Solomon, this particular verse, this one is, this particular verse, I could tell you it is one particular verse that I love so much. God has taught me a lot from this scripture. This scripture has nothing to do with Muhammad. Now let's see. Now, first of all, if you want to interpret a particular verse, now we must understand that the scriptures were not even written with chapters in the first place. They were not written with chapters. It was just, just like God speaking, the original Hebrew and Greek. God just kept on speaking and this man kept on writing. Yeah. It was when it was time for them to communicate these things to men so that it wouldn't just be like, ah, how we just continue talking to the men how to put it in chapters and verses. It to was break like, it down. Yes, to break it down so that for okay. easy comprehension. Now, Songs of Solomon here, well, Songs of Solomon, even this particular, it's right, this chapter 5, was even talking about Jesus, the revelation of Jesus. I can, I can show you here. Now, let's read down verse 2. Five, Songs of Solomon 5. Okay. And verse 2. Verse 2. Okay, let's go. See, I sleep, but my heart ah, wicked. Okay. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, okay. saying, Open, Open to, to me, me, my sister, my love, my love, my dove, my undefiled. For my head is filled with dew, and my locks with the drops of, of the, the night. night. Can we go to Revelation 3.20? Okay. Don't forget that one. Let's, hold, let's go to Revelation 3, verse 20. 20. Revelation 3.20. Hear what it says. Behold, I stand at the door. And knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Who do you think is talking here? Jesus. Jesus Christ. So you can't you can't pick a particular verse, verse and then interpret it the way you want. Now I we didn't finish that 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 second Peter it's one. Right. Sorry. There's so much. There's so much. There's so much. We did not finish the second Peter. Second Peter 1 verse 20 to 21. Okay, please read for me, read for me. I'll meet you there. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Know this first. Before you pick the Bible and then begin to draw answers to whatever questions you have, mm -hmm. understand this first. 
that no prophecy of the scripture, nothing you read here is of its own private interpretation. It is not standing on its own. It is, it is a part of a body. It is not standing on its own. Then let's go to verse 21. It said, For the prophecy came not ah. in old time by the will of man, huh. but holy the men of God. God spake as they were what? Moved by the Holy Ghost. This is my emphasis here. This whole Bible, the whole scripture, it, the Bible, we, 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 I'm not, it's not my own word. Let's read it again. It said, For the prophecy it came, came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were what? Moved by, by the, the Holy, holy Ghost. Ghost. So if we must interpret the Bible, if we must draw light from the Bible, it must be by the Holy Ghost, the one that authored it. It's more like in our world today, we do a lot of projects. You cannot do, if you, no matter the project you want to do today, there are people that have done projects in that like manner. Mm -hmm. So even in our current education, they tell you that you do something like referencing. Yeah. You have to acknowledge the That's, author. Yeah. So without acknowledging the author, whatever you are doing is a crime. Even we in our secular world understand this, how much more in the spirit. Mm -hmm. This is a spiritual book. The one who, sat men down to write it must be consulted for you to understand. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I get yeah. what I'm saying. Now even he, he, made, he made mention of Genesis 1. Genesis 1. Genesis 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. He said that he was make, making mention of the fact that it's God. Yeah, this is the Godhead. This is the Godhead. Now it is it, it is um it is a hard, it is difficult for us to actually just stop here with in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Can we go to John 1 1? John 1 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning, what? God created the heavens and the earth. Yes. And then here we are seeing again, let's say, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. God. This is talking about Jesus. Even though that scripture in the now listen, the the I, I want to I want to specially beg you, if if you must read the Bible, don't read it with the human with the human mind. The human mind is too small to comprehend the things God has laid down here. Read it this like I said earlier, like that first second Peter we read yeah. talked about the fact that holy men were moved yeah. by Spirit. the Holy Spirit to pen down everything here. So if the men who wrote these things were moved by the Holy Spirit, then it is, it, is, it, is, it is important that those that will read it must be moved by the Holy Spirit to, to, what, to read it. And understand it. To understand it. So I think, uh, let's, let's just go on. I don't want to talk after. I've said a lot already. I hope you are... You are I get, I get yeah. what you mean. So... So I think they put the same word that was written in Hebrew in yes. Google translation and it was given them Mohammed. Okay, okay, okay. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. Yes, the name Muhammad does show up. It does say Muhammadim, but the name Muhammad is very plainly in the text. He said it's very plainly in this text. It is not. It is not a character. Okay. It's likely. So maybe in that same that same song, the original text, a statement was made. For instance, um, it could let's say for instance. Um, I don't know. How to, I don't know. How to, I don't know the closest example, but. Um, you just say something like, okay, let's say um, perseverance, all right? Yeah. The Hebrew word for perseverance, the he let's say perseverance, let's imagine perseverance, let's use perseverance as a Hebrew word. And then due to um, lack of words, lack of vocabulary, then they decide to use perseverance to make mention of something, to just explain something. It doesn't necessarily mean that perseverance is the topic there. They are actually talking about. They are actually talking about. We, we read the songs of Solomon ourselves. Yeah. We saw that, in fact, I, didn't, I, I, just read, I just read a verse, verse 2. That's in Solomon 5, verse 2. I just read that verse 2 for you. 
to just see that it wasn't actually talking the main character they revealed there was jesus it it wasn't whether he was mentioned there we all we know is that this is our bible and the truth in this world is what we are after the truth in this world is what we are after and we saw in second, in second peter again i said no scripture of his own is of what any private interpretation it doesn't stand on its own so if you are telling me okay that that um, scripture is pointing to Muhammad. Kindly give me several references to point that that scripture actually explains that Muhammad was the one they are talking about there. Mm. That, is, that is another fact. That is true. So that's no, Muhammad. Muhammad. The word is there in the Hebrew language. In the original, what they call original, it's there. But they have translated that in English as altogether lovely. So this beloved of mine is altogether lovely. When you read altogether lovely, you can't associate with the word Muhammad. You read it a thousand times, altogether lovely, altogether lovely. Or let's say in another language, the praised one, the praised one. Muhammad means the praised one. But he said the praised one, the praised one. You can't think that he's talking about Muhammad. Though Muhammad means the praised one. You have no right to translate names of people. Anybody. Your name should be retained. Mr. Black is Mr. Black, though he's white. <laughs> you have no right to translate names of people. But they have been doing that. Muhammad Im, they translated as altogether lovely. But the word Muhammad is there in the Hebrew language in the original. So we said, look, you have lost the name Jesus Christ, according to the Holy Quran says, Wa is qala Isa bin Maryam. Says, Behold, Jesus, the son of Mary, said, Ya bani Israel, O children of Israel, inni Rasulullah ilaykum. So, most certainly, I am the messenger of God sent to you all. Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayya min al-tawrati. Confirming the revelation which came before me. Wa mubashiran bi rasuli ya'ti min ba'd ismuhu Ahmad. And giving you glad tidings of it a messenger to come after me whose name shall be Ahmad which is another name for Muhammad Muhammad and Ahmad are synonymous terms for this mighty messenger of God Ahmad that is what the Quran tells us so do you understand what he's saying? yeah it was like Jesus was kind of like giving the reference that mm. the messenger will, be, will come after him which his name is Ahmed okay. that's Muhammad okay so it was like in Quran, it was being written like that. Such okay. verse is not in the Bible. Okay. Yes, it's not in the Bible. But uh, what he's saying, I will show you in the Bible where Jesus said, and Jesus is not mentioned Ahmed. This is what I'm talking about. And I will tell you the person, the character of this person. And you and I, you have the Holy Spirit, I have the Holy Spirit. We can bear witness to this person Jesus was talking about. Can we go to John 14? John 14. John 14. Sorry, guys, we're going to do a lot of reading because... Um, we we are not people that just um we are not talking about a fact we are talking about truth and truth is a person john 14. yes john 14. look up john 14. okay let's start from verse verse 15. okay he said if you love me keep my commandment verse 16 said and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter. Hmm. This comforter there talks about Paracletus. It's Paracletus. We'll go on to that. That he may abide with you forever. Verse 17 says what? Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, hmm. neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. So ask the question, this character here and the character they are explaining here, does it correlate? Does it relate? 
Jesus is saying, these are the very... Now, if you are using my Bible, the King James Bible, you see, once you see the letters written in red, yeah. these are the exact words of Jesus. Once they are written in red, it talks about the exact... That's why I recommend the King James Bible. It gives you, even you see, when Jesus is speaking, you see that it's already... They've turned it to red. They made sure it's that color. For the sake of emphasis, for the sake of things like this. Yeah. Now he said, and I will pray the Father, and he, will, shall, give, he shall give you another comforter. He said, Paracletos, someone like me, mm. that he may abide and with you forever. forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the, the world, world cannot, cannot receive, receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him. Neither knoweth him not. But ye know him. Now see, Jesus said, the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. When he came to the part of telling the disciples that, okay, you know him, he didn't talk about seeing. I mean, he's not a person you can see. I get it. Yeah. He said, if whom the, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. This, this with you and shall be in you is talking about the fact that before you come to Christ, before you come to God, there is something that when it could be in a, in a, in a gathering, it could be in a meeting, you just begin to sense this kind of desire to know. You just be sensing like, I feel like, ah, God, I need to give my life to Christ. That is the Holy Spirit. He convinced you first. He's with you to tell you that you are missing out on something. There's something you are not getting. Mm. Then when you now accept his, his I, I call it like his pulling, his luring. It's like he's luring you, like a magnetic force calling you, come, come. That's how some of us gave our life to Christ. We just felt this kind of push. All of a sudden, you just felt, started crying. You feel bad. You feel like you've done bad things. And then it's the Holy Spirit's work. He begins to convict you. As he convicts you, then when you now accept his conviction, you now, it's like win. win. When a man is winning a girl, yeah. begins to tell her things, and that's how the Holy Spirit does. It does. Then over time, as you now accept, he now comes to dwell in you. Yeah. That's what Jesus is saying here. Said, and then he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the word see me no more. But ye, sh ye see me because I live, ye live also. He said, at that day ye shall know that I, I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Yeah. He that hath my he that he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. So for on and so forth. Let me go. I just want to state that fact that it doesn't correlate to what they are saying here. Mm -hmm. This is the this is what the word, this is what Jesus has given to us. The promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit, not a man. Mm -hmm. It's the Holy Spirit, not a man. The reason why I say this with all confidence is because I have him within me. Romans 8 says, My spirit beareth witness with his spirit that we are sons of God. We are sons of God. This is not a, a feeling thing. It's a knowing. How do I know I'm born again? I know and I know that I'm born again because I carry the spirit of God in me. Yeah. So it's not talking about the man. If Jesus was talking about the man, he wouldn't say even the spirit of truth whom the word cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither you knoweth know him. him. But ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So how do you correlate this with Amen. being a man? Ah, are we? Are we? Here. Yeah. So let's let's go on. Let's go on as we see. But Christian says, "Look, it's not it's not in my book. It's not here. There's no Ahmad and there's no Muhammad. So you are left with no alternative but to analyze what is there. You see, they have a verses in the Bible in the Gospel of Saint John, chapter sixteen where it says nevertheless i tell you the truth jesus says it is expedient for you that i go away for if i go not away the comforter will not come unto you but if i go i will send him and when he's come yeah. he will convict the world in respect of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not in me and on and on he says if i don't go the comforter will not come unto you we say that comforter is Muhammad. The same chapter, it says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them. Nah, you haven't got that capacity. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Spirit of truth. Who is the spirit of truth? Ask the Christian. Is the Holy Ghost. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. 
for he shall not speak from himself, but what things so shall he hear, that shall he speak. And he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. So who is the spirit of truth? They say the Holy Ghost. I said, all right, if this is the Holy Ghost, tell us now, what new things has he given you in the past 2,000 years? He said, Jesus said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. But before we expound this aspect, let me reread to you this verse with a little emphasis on the pronouns. He says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them. Ah, how be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself. But what things shall he hear, that shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come, he shall glorify me. Eight masculine pronouns, I say, it ill befits a ghost. You agree? That is a man, a man, a man, a man. Eight times, there is not another verse in the whole Bible with eight masculine pronouns, or eight feminine gender, or eight neuter genders. There isn't. This is a unique verse. For a unique person. What do you think about the scripture? Thank God we read... We read the John 14. Yeah. Where he talked about the fact that what he said. We read that same John 14. Yeah. What did he say? He said, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye, ye know him. But ye know him. We, now, can we see? We are looking at the same. He's talking about John 16. We are, we are starting from John 14. 14, yeah. He said, Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Hmm. Is there any possibility that he's talking about a man here? Then he said, Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not, I will, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you now. Let Personality, Muhammad. Man, 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 not a ghost, not a spook. But we are told he's a spirit. Is Muhammad a spirit? I say yes. That's what your Bible says. You see, every time the word spirit is used in your Bible, I'm telling the Christian, it doesn't stand for the Holy Ghost. Because in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, it, we are told that seven spirits of God went out into the world. I said, you believe in seven Holy Ghosts? He says, no, there's only one Holy Ghost. I said, look, it's seven spirits. It means it should be seven Holy Ghosts. No, spirit doesn't stand for Holy Ghost every time. Then in the same John, the same John, in the first epistle of John, he says, beloved, believe not every spirit. But try the spirits whether they are of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. False prophet is a false spirit. True prophet is a true spirit. Same John is using spirit for a prophet. Don't believe every spirit. Don't believe in every prophet. Same John. In the gospel of Saint John, he says. He says, he that is born of spirit is spirit. And he that is born of the flesh is flesh. So do spirits beget? Do they prohibit? He says, no. Then how can you be born of spirit? No. What it means there is that who is spiritually inclined is spiritual. Who is materialistically inclined is flesh. What brought you here tonight? Some kind of gift that you're expecting from D Dad? You know, he's going to give you some sweet meat. What? Some chocolate? Is that what brought you here? If that was the case, and suppose I give it out to you, you are materialistically inclined. Material things brought you here. So you are a materialist. In the language of the Bible, you are fleshy, you are of the flesh. Materialist. If it was spiritual consideration, motivation that brought you here, then you are spiritual. The gospel language, say he that is born, means a thing that motivates you, that brings you up into being. If it is spirit, spiritually, then you are a spirit. And if you are fleshly, you are flesh. Material, you are flesh. سبب القوي إلى المقام الأرفع وعصمتي وعروتي فالشمس
That make a reference to the Bible and also to the Quran. Yeah. I guess that's that's the end. Yeah. Okay, so let me just um say something and then I think maybe some other time we'll still talk more. Yeah. The Bible is not a history book. The Bible is not a book about prosperity. The Bible is not a motivational book. The Bible is a sociological sociological um document. The word soter soteriological, I'm talking about from the word soteria. Soteria um, speaks about deliverance, salvation. The Bible is a book of salvation. The Bible is a book of salvation. And who is salvation? Jesus. From Genesis to Revelation, and I say this with all boldness and all confidence, Genesis to Revelation. Every book of the Bible, if you read it with light of the Holy Ghost, it will point you to one person, Jesus. So Jesus said, when he is come, he will not speak of his own, but he will reveal me. He will talk about me. That's why Second Peter spoke about the Father. Holy men were moved by the Holy Ghost yes. to write it down because they were supposed to, they have one assignment Point men to Jesus. Let's read the last scripture for this for this um, for this video, this particular video. Colossians one. Colossians. 1. I would have loved to go to the first John, but the first John will keep it for some other time. But let's just go to the one that we because the first John is very lengthy. If we talk about the first John, um, first John, what they talk about Jesus there, we will not, the Spirit and Jesus there will not leave this place. Let's go to Colossians. Colossians is in the New Testament after Philippians. Yeah, okay. Colossians one. Colossians one. Let's read the verse fifteen. Fifteen to. Let's read, start from 15. It says, Who is the image of the invisible Talking God? Talking about Jesus now. The firstborn of every creature. Okay. For by him were all things created, that all that are in heaven and that are in it, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Mm -hmm. All things were created by him mm. and for him. Mm. And he is before all things mm. and by him all things consist mm -hmm. that's, that's and he thing. is the head of the body mm -hmm. the church mm -hmm. who is the beginning mm -hmm. the firstborn from the dead mm -hmm. that in all things he might have the preeminence yes. for it pleased the father that in him should all fullness dwell hmm. in all, all fullness talking about everything you want to talk about dwells in Jesus. So if you want to find, if you want to talk about prosperity, if you look at Jesus, you can still find a branch in Jesus that talks about prosperity. But the sum total of Jesus is not, the sum total of the Bible, you want to look at it, if you want to pick prosperity, you'll find prosperity there. If you want to pick motivation, you'll find it there, but that is not the entirety of the Bible. That's just a side, that's just one part. And where most of us have fallen victims is because we've taken one part and then we've exalted it. Meanwhile, the Bible is talking about a person, not talking about a team. It's talking about a person. That's what the Bible is revealing. Let's go. Read verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. Who, who does the Bible talk about going to the cross? Jesus Christ. Jesus. Now, by now you should know that we are talking about Jesus. Let's go on. By him to reconcile all things unto himself. Uh -huh. By him. I say, whether they be things in earth mm -hmm. or things in heaven, uh -huh, go on. and you that were sometime alienated uh -huh. and, and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled mm -hmm. in the body of his flesh 
through death mm. to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable and unreprovable in, in his sight. If you continue, if you continue in, faith, in faith, in faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. What is the hope of the gospel? Jesus Christ, and which, say, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. We are of I poor, I am made a minister. Hmm. This is Jesus. So the Bible talks about one person, Jesus. So the reason why we we are not seeing we are not seeing the light of it is that you are looking for you are looking for you are looking for the wrong thing. When you are looking for, when you look for Jesus in the scriptures in the Bible, you won't miss anything. But the moment you are looking for something else, you will enter into error. But once you are so far, you are looking for Jesus, you are on the right track. And I, I like I will keep going back to our foundational scripture. That second Peter has talked about the Father. No scripture is of private interpretation. Because the scripture is talking about one person, talking about Jesus. That's true. So that's it. Fully convinced. And I understand it this time around, guys. That's why the Bible said, all is this is your guide. Guide your direction like no matter how they are trying to tell you this or that go back to the word of god it shall direct your paths and i truly i'm convinced and i believe in what the word have spoken to me right here and it was not written by man it was written by the holy spirit it was written by basically for jesus christ as my pastor have said it right now guys i am fully convinced and i fully accept it this is a really lovely video and I understand how he broke it down for me and I get to understand his side of view. Though he was speaking, he was picking out a point in the Bible and you breaking it down for me and showing me scriptures in the Bible, I fully understand now and I'm fully cleared because yeah. I was kind of like confused. Like I was confused for almost a week, right? Like oh, wow. thinking like, is it like this? Is it like this? How is it like? It was altered. Is it like, like there, there was a lot of things on my mind. Mm. If you were to watch my previous video, you'd be like, ah, this guy is kind of like confused. Okay. So now I know where I stand. <laughs> this was really an amazing video, guys. Comment down below, guys. Share your thoughts. <sighs> share, 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 guys. Give us a thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. I just bought a bag Like an old lady I'm back, wood smoking I don't own papers Pass that 808 That don't, don't shake her Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater Baby, mama bugging I'm so quick to hit ignore Buku, bitch, in my bed I got scales all